Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, alhamdulillahi hamdan yuwafi ni'amahu wa yukafi'u mazidah, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahum alimna ma anfa'una wa anfa'na bima alimtana wa zidna ilman. Ya kareem. There's a man, it's a true story, I heard of it this week and it's relative to the topic today, so I thought I'd start off by sharing this story. There was a man, this man um, was not a very good man, he was not a very kind man, he's always cursing people, he's getting into obscene conversations with people, using words that, you know, that, would, that don't, don't suit a person, let alone a Muslim, constantly. Just the general conduct of this individual was not up to par with the Muslim standards. Rather just the ethical standards. Forget Islam again. Forget Islam aside, I'm talking about an individual that based on any standard in any society is a bad person. Like for, let me give you an example. He'd go up to a person, he's buying something and the guy gave him wrong change, he'd spit in his face. I'm really, this is serious, this is a real scenario. A person in his workplace, he went to the cafeteria and he bought some and you know, people are supposed to be respected as individuals and this guy goes up to the man and he spits in his face. Then, he does it again. Then for example, the office boy, for those of you guys that are office workers, you'd realize, you know, you'd probably know, that there's, you know, usually office boys that take letters around and this kind of stuff. The office boy didn't do the job right, he spit in his face. The boss didn't do something right, he'll yell at him. He'll curse him. He'll go, give him really, really bad names. To an extent that, I don't work at this place by the way. Someone I know works there. I just go and visit this person that I know. Just to visit him. So through my visits, over a course of 2-3 years, I've gotten to know a lot of the people that work there. And you know, they know me. So I go in there and say salam. Every single time I walk there, everybody's complaining about this individual. I don't know why they haven't fired him. He's not, he doesn't have a big position. They've actually promoted him rather. Subhanallah. So um, he's now the country manager of sales or something like that. And he makes the he makes you know, he he makes the company lose a lot of money. A lot of money. Someone I know was doing a training, and the company uh, was relying on this individual to call the clients to come for the training seminar, and they booked a hotel, they booked everything, and 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 he forgot to call the clients. He lost them three thousand something, you know, reals. Just because of, you know, they had to pay for the booking. Let alone, you know, he must have cost them some of the clients as well. Right? So, at the end of the day, this guy's a bad guy in general. Whether he performs well at work or not, that's besides the point. That was just a side point. Now one day, one of his co-workers emailed him. One of his co-workers emailed him. And in his email, he kindly said, you know, I want this and this and this, can you please help me? And the person didn't reply. So then he emails him again. He says, I want this and this and this and this and this. Can you please um, do it for me? But this time around, he doesn't email normally. He puts it in bold letters, in red letters. You know, he puts exclamation marks and this and that. And it's really like, you know, it's really urgent now. There's like urgent with like quotations at every angle. It's really urgent now. But the guy still doesn't reply. So this person that's emailing this wicked individual, he picks up the phone and he calls him. He's like, what is wrong with you? And they started getting serious in the conversation. And the boss is sitting on one of the two sides. He's sitting on the on the side with the wicked individual. Okay, he's sitting there hearing this, hearing one side of the conversation. Okay? 
So they're going back and forth and one guy goes, you're a dog. Okay, and, and, uh, and it, this is happening in Arabic. So you can imagine what the word was being used there. Okay, for those of you that understand. And he said, yeah, you think I'm a dog? He says, okay, then you're a son of a beep. So the guy goes, oh yeah, then you're this. And he says, oh yeah, you're a son of a this again. We used another term in Arabic. In English, it's the same term. And so on and so forth, they're fighting. Now this person that called another individual, a son of a beep, he was the one, he's the wicked individual. He's the one that had his boss on his side, sitting there with him. Okay? So now this guy, he says, I'm going to take this matter to the cops. This guy was cursing me, but you know, he, I don't know why he wasn't thinking that he was cursing him back as well. So he said, this guy was cursing me, I'm going to take him to the cops. And he took the matter up to the cops. And this really, really occurred. In fact, the, you know, they were supposed to have a ruling today about this affair. Today was the court hearing. So, this guy takes it up to the cops. The cops are like, okay, let's hear both sides of the story. Bring the other guy. The other guy comes. They're both like, oh, he said to me this, he said to me that. And in the end they say, do any of you have witnesses? Now the wicked individual says, yeah, the boss was sitting there. He's my witness. But I don't know what happened to him, where his brain was. He was on the phone. The boss can't hear. He can only hear one side of the story. And that's the wicked side of the story. So they called the boss and said, okay, you know, uh, let's call the boss. When they call the boss, the boss is like, look, the phone wasn't on speakerphone. All I heard was this individual calling that man a son of a beep. Dogat. Okay. So now the cops are like, what? Okay. Do you guys know the ruling for a person that does such a thing in Islam? You call someone, you're basically proclaiming that his mother is a zani. He's proclaiming that the mother is what? Is, has committed zina. She's a fornicator. That's what, he's, that's what that term actually comes out to mean. We don't realize that, but that's what that term actually comes out to mean. That you're saying that the mother has committed fornication. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in the Qur'an. And there's a very defined ruling for this kind of an individual. You know, people's honors are protected in Islam. وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمُحْصَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءِ فَاجْلِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدًا وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ شَهَادَةً أَبَدًا وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُ Those that say such a thing about women that are chaste. And then they don't bring four witnesses upon what they're seeing, then take them and whip them 80 times. That's a ruling for such a person. Whip them 80 times. Of course, after going through a court of law, as they're going through now. وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا لَهُمْ شَهَادَةً أَبَدًا And do not ever accept their witness in court of law ever again. So their witness, a person like this is witness in the court of law is no more. Even if he sees a crime, you're not allowed to use him as a witness anymore. Because why? Because he is going and he is proclaiming or dishonoring the honor of a Muslim woman, of a woman. So this kind of an individual that can do that, that can lie to that extent, his witness is worth nothing in the, in the court of Islamic law. وَأُولَٰئِكَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entitled them to be fusaq. Disobedient slaves of Allah azza wa People that don't follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments. Now this person, miskin, he was just saying a little thing. 
And he didn't, he, put, he basically, he took himself and he put himself into the problem. The guy that he was trying to bring to the court of law, or the guy that he was trying to bring to the shurta, quote unquote, the cops, okay, he was actually saying, please don't, I'm going to get in trouble, I don't want no trouble, please just don't, don't. And that guy doesn't get in trouble. And this guy's got charges for qadf al-muhsanat. Qadf, this concept of, you know, the 80 lashes for a person that proclaims somebody to be a fornicator without a proof uh, is called qadf in Islam. It's a major sin. Because basically you're doing ghibah of the individual but at the highest level of ghibah that you can do. In any case, um, the reason why I brought this story up is because I wanted to share with you the fact that if a person doesn't have or does not keep others protected from himself, from the evils of himself. You know how we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every week to protect ourselves from our own evils? If a person doesn't protect others from the evils of his own self, eventually, though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give some leeway to this individual. As Allah's Prophet said in a hadith, that Allah gives leeway, leeway to a transgressor. Until a point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grabs this man. Hatta ida aqadahu. To an extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually takes account for everything that occurred. At that point, the person cannot escape in any direction. Now this person may have thought that everybody at work is afraid of me, I can do whatever I want. But he goes and he messes his own honor up. He's trying to get somebody else in trouble and he ends up being the one that's in trouble. And Allah's Prophet ﷺ in the hadith that we're going to be studying today, he said, المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده. A believer is an individual who all the other believers, a Muslim is an individual who all of the other Muslims are protected from his tongue and they're also protected from his hands. Now, the scholars, you know, they differed about what exactly means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Allah's Prophet sallallahu he says, a believer, a, a, a Muslim rather. What does it mean? Because does it mean that the person is no longer a Muslim if someone is, uh, someone is not protected from his hands and from his tongue? Of course, without... A difference of opinion amongst the scholars, that's not the case. That's not the case. When I said there's a difference of opinion, I'll get to what the difference of opinion is. You know, there's no difference of opinion amongst the scholars of this Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that if a person, you know, he harms another believer, the mere fact that he'd harm another believer, he doesn't get out of the fold of Islam. So you don't understand from this particular hadith that, you know, if you harm somebody, you're not out of the fold of Islam. As some people may understand. However, it just means Al-Muslim Al-Kamil The complete believer The complete believer Is the one That Other believers Are not harmed by his hands And they're not harmed by his tongue By the, by the tongue and by the hands Now the reason why I say complete believer Is so we can include a person that's, you know, uh, in belief, we can include a person that his belief is not complete. As in the person that has harmed somebody else. And in the Arabic language, subhanAllah, the beauty of the Arabic language. You know just the word Al, you know how we say T-H-E, the? Okay, just Al-Muslim. Who knows what a Muslim is and Al-Muslim? Huh? <coughs> tell me. You tell me if there's a difference. You're the Shaykh. <laughs> no? Okay. So, in the Arabic language, uh, a Muslim is a Muslim, and a Al Muslim is also the Muslim. However, the THE doesn't do justice to the word Al. Because the word Al in the Arabic language, it comes for several different meanings. It comes for. Several different meanings. And in this particular context, 
as the scholars of hadith they said in this particular context it means it almost shows it's called al lil kamal the al that shows completeness so it's trying to say the complete muslim so it doesn't just mean you know generally a muslim is a the complete muslim so that a person doesn't misunderstand and think that if you were to do such and such you're no longer a muslim rather the al over here it empowers the word and the statement to mean the complete muslim is the one who you know other muslims and uh, also non muslims uh, to say are saved from his tongue and his hands now there is several reasons why i'm not going to mention the difference of opinion it'll take too long there are several reasons why the prophet ali salatu wasalam used the word lisan and used the word you know used the word yad one of the reasons is because most of the evil that's generated in life against other people is done through the hands and the mouth. So you either go and say something evil to an individual, or you go and you know uh, harm the person. And usually the harm is occurred by you know the hands. It always starts with uh, the, with the hands. However, when the Prophet ﷺ said yadi, this is the most you know probable situation, most common situation. This doesn't mean you can go and kick somebody in the face. <laughs> it just means you can go kick somebody in the face, you know? It just means that most commonly the harm is occurred through what? Yet, and here is a, you know, the language of the Prophet ﷺ is just so beautiful. The pre- precision that the Prophet ﷺ used to choose in his word, or use in his word. It's so beautiful. Like the Prophet ﷺ over here, he could have said anything. Me, from his tongue and his feet. From his tongue and himself, for example. From his tongue and his transgression. From anything could, be, could have been said, right? Because usually you, what he's trying to say is transgression with the hands, right? But the Prophet ﷺ used the word yet. Now going back to the Arabic, the word yet can mean a physical hand and it can just mean it can have a metaphorical meaning as well. Well, you know, it could, that's true. But who knows to use that particular word in this particular situation where both are required. See what I'm saying? It can have a physical meaning, as in the actual hand, like you don't go punch somebody in the face. It can have a metaphorical meaning. So for example, this... A gangster, he's got all these little gangsters working for him in their little gang squad. He says to one of his little gangsters, he says, Go break that car, go break that window, go do this. Is he included in the hadith? No, yeah, he, of course he is. And that's why the Prophet used the word yet. Involvement in that action. From one way, you know, from in a direct manner, almost in a direct manner, not someone that actually did the action, but also, for example, someone that commanded for the action to be done. So in the Arabic language, you'd say, somebody put his hand on somebody else's wealth. And it could just mean that, you know, he sent somebody to go steal the money for him. And it would work. But in English, if you were to say, I put my hand on his, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah, well not... In certain cases, but not all cases. Certain cases. Yeah, I mean, the word hand is used in English as well. But, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. It can probably be used. But uh, the point is that the fact that he used the word hand over here, that remains. Because metaphor, yes. Metaphor is, you know, the people that negate metaphor, it's difficult to negate it. It, metaphor is found in every single language. There are scholars from you know Islam that negate metaphor. However, metaphor is found in every single language. Whether you know the, Allah subhanahu wa taala's names are supposed to be metaphorical or not, that is an aqadi issue. But because of the fact that we affirm the names, we don't come and say that metaphor is no longer there. Metaphor still remains, but Allah subhanahu wa taala's names are affirmed. طيب. 
And now coming to the fact that Allah's Prophet ﷺ used the word uh, lisan over here. Uh, he's trying to, ﷺ of course, refer to all of the sins that occur and that are pertinent to the tongue of a person. So, you know, uh, we know the Prophet ﷺ several times uh, used to encourage a person to speak less. The Prophet ﷺ, as the Prophet ﷺ himself, himself said, whoever has something good to say, let him say, otherwise, awliya smut, otherwise stay quiet. Man yadman li ma bayna lahiyay. Whoever can assure and guarantee me those, that thing that's between his jaw bones, as in, as in the tongue. Because as we said, most of the harm that's occurred, it's usually done either by the physical hands, and that's why the Prophet ﷺ used the word hands over here, or it's done by, it's done by the tongue. And as I was telling the other class as well, I'll tell you that if you look at things that you say in vain, if you look at things that you say in vain, you'd realize that you're doing one of three or four things. Let's say you're sitting there talking about, you know, um, you're having guy talk. Let's just put it that way. Talking about something that you shouldn't be talking about. Because the Prophet ﷺ used to say a believer is not a la'an. He's not someone that curses. He's not someone that's backbiting. And he's not someone that's promiscuous in his speech. He's not always just sitting there and talking about things that men usually talk about. I don't know what women talk about, but what men usually talk about. Right? He's not sitting there doing that. Let's say you're sitting there and doing that. Let's say you're sitting there doing that. Do you realize that right with you there are two angels that may even be shy of what you're saying and what you utter? And not only are they shy of what you utter, you are actually putting them through the misery of writing every word you speak. مَا يَلْفَضُوا مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ he doesn't, a person doesn't utter even a single word except that along with him is what? Two angels, Raqib and Hatid. Right? Not only does that occur, now this particular sheet of paper where you're having that promiscuous conversation, she looks that way and he looks that way, you know, inshallah you're not having a he look that way conversation. <laughs> If she looked that way, still is a better conversation, you know, alhamdulillah. <laughs> What's it called? Um, you are gonna have this, and as somebody was talking, they call this khana in the Arabic language, promiscuous conversations that are not supposed to be occurred. They're not supposed to be done as a, as a Muslim. You're not supposed to be having these kind of conversations. It's not the, you know, it's not the behavior, it's not a mannerism of a believer. Whether it's haram or not, let's put that aside for a second. Is just not the manner of a believer, right? A man was having this kind of a conversation and one of the ulama, he saw him from a distance and he said to him, do you realize that you're doing yahada uyu? Do you realize that you're doing nothing more than dictating a book to Allah Azza wa Imagine every single statement that you were making there, having joke, cracking jokes, doing all of these things. Imagine them have, having, you know, imagine having them read in front of Allah as you, 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 you might feel you might feel humiliated if a good friend of yours hears it, right? Your father hears it. But this is Allah subhanahu wa taala hearing it. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Either. It continues because the misery that you're putting yourself through by having those kind of conversations will continue even till the day of judgment. As you stand in front of your Lord, you stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, you stand in front of the angels, you stand in front of all of the prophets, all of humanity that ever existed, and your scroll is being read to you. Every single statement you said will be read to you. 
You didn't embarrass yourself just in front of your friends, in front of your, in front of the angels, by yourself with your Lord, you know. But now in front of, not publicly, you're talking about with the whole of humanity with you, being dishonored and humiliated. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases that blameworthiness that you're feeling in your heart by telling you, Oh you, why did you do such and such? And that's the tongue. Anything bad you say, that's what you're doing. You're not putting yourself through misery. You're putting these angels <laughs> that don't wish to disobey their Lord, so they write the statements. And you are humiliating yourself on the day of judgment in front of every single person that ever existed in humanity. Imagine standing in, and Adam a.s. being there, Dawood, Nuh, any angel, any prophet you can think of, any messenger you can think of. All of them there, and they're hearing all these things. She looks and, you know, inshallah not, he looks definitely, you know, they're hearing all of these things. And that's why, you know, it's not, it's not an easy task. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never told you, Islam, people think Islam is easy. We're talking about ease, right? People, no, people think that. People proclaim that ease, ease, and everything is easy, and it's all easy, and we're talking about how along with ease in Islam, yes, there's something called mashaqqa as well. We discussed that last week, difficulty as well, right? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never told you that it will be easy. Those that struggle in my path. So it's a struggle. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولُنَا Those that struggle in my path. So it's a struggle. In our path, we will lead them to the ways, to our ways. To the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for you to go in. And with that being said, we'll stop. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين.